we have an engine display down here, which are on Lazy Susans. You can actually sit and you could rotate the engine and see how everything all went together in 1926. This is the JD model, 74 cubic inch. And you can see the unique carburetor system on here, whereas the uh, intake manifold is actually screwed to the heads by a flange like a, like a pipe fitting. This is the uh, 1954 model. This was when Japanese were making Harley Davidsons and it's a Rikuyu. And if you notice, it's very rare because it still has the Japanese markings on the case. And it looks very similar to the 45 cubic inch engines that, are, that we have today. Now we have the 1932 Harley Davidson uh, 45 inch. It's come out of an RL. And again, on the Lazy Susan, you can still rotate it and look and see how the carburation setup is over here. Like it was on the JD, it's actually screwed into the heads over here with the uh, pipe fitting. In 1948, Hardy decided to uh, change the configuration of their engines again, and they made what they called the pan head, so-called because the uh, valve covers were actually shaped like bread pans. And if you had to do any work at the side of the road, you could take the heads, uh, the valve covers off, turn them upside down and use them to hold your parts while you're busy working on your bike. And uh, it's still one of the more popular bikes today along with the knuckle. So now we have a 1983. Uh, this is a shovel head. This would have been the last year of the shovel. The configuration, the heads looked like a shovel. Uh, it would have been the last year of uh, production for most of the models, although in 1984, some of the FLHs did finish off the round of uh, production with a shovel head engine. We have the Evolution engine, which is called the block head, for the want of a better name, because the heads on it are uh, very square. And it's actually a cutaway, and you can actually sit and spin the, uh, the clutch and the starter gear, and actually get the pistons to go up and down, and see how the valves open and closed. It's very unique. We find a lot, of, uh, a lot of schools that come down here for tours, they spend a lot of time around this engine, seeing how it operated. So now we have our Buell uh, race bike. It was an S1 Lightning right off the uh, showroom floor. It was actually one of our demonstrators. And uh, Trev was nice enough to let us build this up to take down to Bonneville to run in the salt flats in the 1350 production pushrod class. Now Peter Sellers was the mechanic on it and Shane Keneally actually rode it. My job was to make sure the thing got there in the truck and trailer. The old record was 144 miles an hour and we brought it up to uh, 150 miles an hour point 023. Uh, believe it or not, this is a, basically a stock S1 Lightning. Buell was, uh, was going a long time before this some of the original Buells back in the 80s had full fairings on them, which would have made them even more streamlined than this. And even the Buell engineers weren't sure if we could even get close to 150 miles an hour because of the configuration of the little fairing. Gladly we proved them wrong. <laughs>